Hello, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to listen to my telephone interview with gospel artist Patrick Dobson. Now, the interview, I do need to let you know, is a little bit lengthy, but I promise if you listen all the way until the end, you will certainly be blessed. All right, let's tune in. So what did you listen to growing up? You know, growing up, um, I just was introduced to so much music because my mom was our music minister and my dad passed to the church uh, that I grew up in in South Alabama. And um, just really just you know, grew to love uh, gospel music. And uh, But my mom introduced me to Shirley Caesar and uh, Mississippi Mass Choir and John P. Key. Um, then, of course, I listened to Aguinas. So that was my favorite group. And then uh, commissioned, and so you know, a wide variety of music, and but I really just kind of landed on gospel. Right, right, okay. Now, when I first heard you, Patrick, I thought you were another artist, and I listened to you for like an entire week, and I was uh, like, man, uh, you know, this quote artist is so good. Do you know the artist I'm, I'm referring to? <laughs> <laughs> Red Hammond opened up for him in 30 cities. 
studies in um, 07. Mm -hmm. And um, then, of course, I get a phone call one day from Pastor John P. Key to record on his album, mm -hmm. and I do a song with him. And uh, then one one uh, particular artist, uh, a lot of gospel listeners may not know of, but his name is Michael English. He's a CCM artist, but came out, you know, in the 90s and early 90s, and I was a huge fan of him, and so I opened up for him once, and he brought me up at the end of the show to bring me to close out a song with him. That was one of my favorite songs that he did. Awesome. And, uh, and so, you know, that was a real high spot, and, uh, of course, the first time I met uh, Pastor Marvin Winans, you know, was, that was really special for me, and he didn't give me much love at the time. <laughs> so, somebody introduced him to me, and, he, and I said, I said, Pastor, Pastor Winans, I said, it's so, so, I'm so glad to meet you, and, and I said, you know, I grew up listening to you, he said, no, you're not old enough to have grown up to listen to me. Whoa! And, 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 <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and, and so he said, he, just kind of, you know, mess with me a little bit there, but, um, you know, there's been a lot of great moments, I mean, with, with different artists that I've respected and, and had the opportunity to cross paths with or minister along with. Um, another, you know, incredible opportunity I had was, you know, to lead worship on a consistent basis uh, when I lived in Dallas uh, with one of my favorite, you know, gospel uh, artists was Pastor Gary Oliver. Yeah. And so, you know, I look back and Honestly, if I had, if I tried to write a script and and really chart out my life, I don't think I could have already put it together, you know, quite like God has done it. Because everybody that was somewhat of an influence in my life musically, um, I've had the opportunity to work with or minister alongside of, and so it's really been a blessing. And I'm glad God didn't give it to me all at one time, you know, because I don't think I could could have taken it or processed it. And probably get caught up, you know, like I said before, I mean, I think that God just really lets it come um, in, in a certain flow so that we're able to receive it all and, mm -hmm. and, and still do His will and not get distracted in what He's called us to do. Mm -hmm. So when this first started then, even you just recording the album, is it as big as, you know, you thought it was going to be? Did you even fathom working with these type of artists? No, I can't say that I ever did. I mean, I knew when I was a child, um, I was sitting in my room one day, and I used to, honestly, I just would get so involved in music, I would sense the presence of God, and I would just be bawling in my room, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> sometimes I'd close the door, and I would just be at a loss as to why I had these emotions or, or these, <laughs> you know, these feelings yeah. about gospel music, and I remember one time there was this particular artist that, we had heard, I mean, we didn't have the internet or anything back then, so right, <laughs> kind of okay. like, you just heard by word of mouth, but we heard that a particular artist had, had, had fallen, and, and I sat there in my room with a cassette open, and I was just like, Lord, you know, if you ever choose to use like this, I want to be a good representation of you, mm -hmm. because I was so disappointed, and I, I just, I guess as a child, had a, you know, a sense of destiny that God was going to give me some outlet you know, in music to be able to minister. And um, and I really, I guess, found myself as a child almost making excuses for my love for gospel music because I didn't really listen to anything else. I mean, I listened to Little Boys Come In because I like their harmonies and, yeah. you know, Mariah Carey, but I mean, it was just all gospel. And it was very unique and, and weird in ways for, you know, a white kid in <laughs> Selma, Alabama, you know. And so <clears throat> that's really, you know, in a nutshell, uh, you know, just my experience. Right, right. And it's funny that you brought up the white kid. I, I did not know you were white. Like, I, I swear, if it wasn't for the internet, I'm serious. I was like, you know, Fred Hammond's come out, and then, you know, when I saw you were white, I said, well, maybe he's just a light-skinned black dude, you know? And so, <laughs> I'm zooming in, I was like, oh my goodness, this man is good. So, that's really yeah. funny. Oh, yeah. Um, and now the song Keep Me, and I know I keep bringing this up, that song, Patrick, literally ministered to me. I mean, especially there's a, excuse me, a verse in there that says you crafted me in secrecy, you know, and I know the plans you have for me. I literally repeated that, just that part over and over and over, and it really, really ministered to me. And I went and I saw the music video that you did, and it touched me even more. 
Um, and I saw your wife and your son in the video. So I want to ask, was that song based on a real life scenario or situation? And do you mind sharing if it is? Yeah, and you know, I wrote the song in 2004, and you know, at that time, a lot of stuff was moving for me. And you know, you feel like you're starting starting to get into your stride and, and towards your destiny, and things are, you know, a lot of times we say it's running on all cylinders, and mm -hmm. so. That's kind of how everything was going for me in April of 2004, and I just felt like, man, you know, if it keeps moving like this, I'm going to see my entire destiny unfold in the next year. And so, um, which, you know, I was just excited about what God had put in my heart. And so, but it just really, really just came to a screeching halt uh, in April of 2004, and you know, I was a part of a church, and they had let me go. And uh, part of the reason, honestly, was because my sound was, was too urban, or let's just be real, it was too, it was too black. It was too black. <laughs> so, you know, and so I was just at a loss because I oh. really felt like I found myself and I was comfortable in my skin, you know, because I didn't have to make excuses for why, you know, I love gospel music. And, um, you know, no matter what we did, it was going to have a certain vibe or feel to it just simply because that was my DNA. And so... Um, and, you know, we had, I had a fallout with some people that I was, you know, trying to start a studio with, and, and you know, because of that, and, and it just, I mean, Satan just got into the middle of it, and, and I sat there, and I was just in my room by myself, and began to write Keep Me, and it was really probably one of the quickest songs that I've ever written, because it was just pouring out of me, it was my heart's cry to God, and, you know, I was just sitting there, and... You know, I didn't intend for it to be on radio, I didn't intend for it to be on an album, it was just my, my petition to God, and so, I mean, when I wrote the, the part, you know, that you referenced, uh, you crafted me in secrecy, yeah. and those plans that you had for me, you know, my thought was, uh, I was being judged on something, you know, I was being judged at a point, um, and let me see how I can put this, but I was, I was being judged at, at a point, um, where God was not finished with what he wanted to do, it, do in me, and people expected him to be finished. And, you know, if I can liken it to something that would be, you know, a picture that you're drawing, and I'm, you know, I used to draw when I was a kid, so when you're drawing a picture, um, and you're not quite finished, you kind of hide the picture because you don't want anybody to judge what you're creating based on what you have at that point. And so, you know, the artwork was not finished, so I'm not ready to present it. And so that's kind of how I felt like, Lord, you know, these, these friends of mine, cool friends of mine, have given up on me in this process when we were just getting off the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, it all stemmed out of, a, you know, just a bad situation there at the church. And, um, you know, it was just, I didn't understand it, but I knew that God had, had better things for me and that what he had for me would eventually come to pass. And so that's where, you know, the, those lyrics were, that's where they were derived. And so... Um, you know, people need to know that God is working on them, that he's crafting them, that he's, he's forming them, and, you know, he does hide us in, in himself, and, and, and he presents us at a certain time, and so the thing is, is for us to wait for that time uh, that we're presented, and, and that, you know, the world shouldn't judge us on what we are at that moment, but that he's, he's making something out of us, so it was just uh, something to encourage people. Now, I'm going to veer off track here because now, now I've got questions for myself. <laughs> so what did you do in, your, in the waiting season, you know, while you were um, waiting for God to, you know, pour into you and do what he wanted to do and, you know, kind of present you to the public? Were you just writing? Were you seeking him mostly? What exactly were you doing in those waiting seasons? Um, you know, crying, <laughs> getting mad. Yeah. Uh, Repenting, um, praising, uh, really just, I mean, if you look in Psalm, if you look at David, um, the book of Psalms, I mean, you see where, where David, he gets mad and says, why does it seem like the wicked are prospering, you yeah. know, and, and I'm sitting here, I'm living a life that's consecrated to you, and, and, you know, I don't see my provision where it needs to be, and, and, you know, opportunities were shut down, and, 
And then at times it seemed like the heavens were open and, and you know, man, I got a few phone calls and I saw some light and then it didn't pan out. Right. You know, and so it was it was just a roller coaster and a lot of times you know, you have people that are behind you say, Hey man, go do what you've got to your heart to do, we're behind you hundred percent and once you get going into it, you look back and some of those people are not no longer a part of your life. Right. And so a lot of times you find yourself by yourself or you know, in my case it was me and my wife hold hands saying, hey, we're going to go forward and do what God told us to do. And so um, you have to be consistent. And, you know, in, in the music video, part of the thing that carried us through our adoption process was the, was the experience that we, we've had. You know, over the years, and that song just really resonated through a lot of experiences that we had in our life. And so even in our adoption process, we were married uh, 12 years before we had our first son. And so we were able to adopt him. And, and God brought his word to pass, and it was quick. And one thing that God put in my heart was that anytime you have a promise or or a word that, that God has given you, hey, you're going to do this, you're going to be this. And then we also have the manifestation of that where we're the touchable version of what he told us. Mm-hmm. But in between those two points, is a lot of space. And so one thing that God really put in my heart is to stay in the vehicle of faith and don't get out. And so, you know, we had to stay in the vehicle of faith. I mean, I had... When I decided to move out to Dallas on on air and just, you know, complete faith, I mean, we didn't even have a home when we were in a moving truck, you know, going to Dallas to work out there with Fred and, um, you know, we had well-meaning friends and worship leaders that one, one particular guy called me and said, Pastor, you're going to end up, you know, eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and, and you know, you're not going to have a future. And I said, well, I'll put it this way. If, I'm gonna be, if I'm going to uh, be eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, at least I'm moving in the direction that I believe God has told me to go. Mm-hmm. And if I fail, at least I'll fail falling towards Him. Yeah. And so that was really, you know, you don't look for the, che- the cheering section to be with you in a tight spot. And mm-hmm. so you have to say, you know, God has put a word in my heart and I'm going to pursue it and I'm going to go after it. And I'm not going to take no for an answer. And I'm going I'm to let it be His because... Uh, another thing I encourage people to do is, is don't try to birth something out of your flesh because you'll have to maintain it yourself. Mm-hmm. But if you allow God to birth it, then he will be the one that's responsible for maintaining it. So, um, you know, it's, it's a long journey, and it's not, I mean, it's painful, and, but there's joy in it as well. And so you have to look at all of it together and say, you know what, I appreciate it. I appreciate the tight spots. I appreciate the, the joyous moments. I appreciate it all because and embrace it because um, you know God ultimately gets glory out of it. Right, right. Amen. Yeah. Now this is my my last question here. Um, in closing, what I, I did go to your site and I do um, I noticed that you had you know different events and stuff coming up. Do you have anything major currently that's going to be coming up that may not be on your calendar? Right now we just uh, are releasing the brand new single "Open the Heavens." And uh, we are in the process of working on the second album. And uh, so that's hopefully going to come out the first quarter, maybe the second quarter of 2014. And so that's something that's on the agenda right now. And uh, just doing dates here and there. I just got finished doing doing VIP with uh, Pastor John P. Key in Charlotte. And uh, we may possibly put out a Christmas single uh, this year for radio. So... Uh, that's kind of what's on the plate right now, and really just trying to make the good decisions, as, good decisions as far as you know when are we going to release the second album, and you know what all are we going to include on it. So. Right. Do you have a title for the second album? Not yet, okay. not yet, and, and you know I'm itching real bad right now because I'm feeling it. it it's it's about to be birthed, and mm-hmm. so I know I'm getting close to it. But um, I think you know the, the other album took so long to, to do. I think this album is going to feel like a whirlwind after we're finished because, you know, uh, in comparison to how long it took on the first project. And we do know the second album is always, you know, uh, you have to be careful in how you release it and, and what you release, you know, what songs you release because people will base everything off that first album, you know, and so you want to have a good representation. And so we want to be, we really want to bathe in a prayer and it be something that God, for us and us, and so, you know, that's our, our prayer for album two. 
awesome. Man, thank you very much. No problem. Hey, got it. See